Hello students, this video is going to walk you through the steps of applying horizontal prism tolerance while inspecting a pair of glasses. So let's get started. First I want to look at what we have here on the screen. We have the RX because we are verifying the prescription. We have the patient's PD which is the horizontal location of the wearer's eye in the frame. We have the glasses PD, which is the horizontal location of the optical centers in the lenses, or the major reference points. We have the reticles for the right and the left lens, which directly relates down to the frame so that you can see what's happening on the glasses versus what's happening in the lensometer target. We also have ANSI's unwanted horizontal tolerance which is two and a half millimeters of total PD error or 0.67 diopters of total prism error. To apply horizontal tolerance we begin with a pair that's been spotted and measured or the measured PD in the patient's desired PD. This is the minimum amount of information needed to begin. Now let's take a look at the overall process. The first step is to compare the measured PD to the patient's PD, allowing two and a half millimeters of error. If the error is two and a half millimeters or less, the pair passes and we continue on essentially ignoring the error. But if the error is greater than two and a half millimeters, the pair will fail the millimeter test which means we need to continue on to the prism test. To apply the prism test, we need to induce a third of a diopter of prism in each lens and spot the locations. We want to make sure that we move the frame in the direction of the desired PD. We'll re-measure these new spots and that will allow us to apply the prism amount of 0.67 so that we can find out if the patient's eye falls within the tolerated amount of prism. If the wearer's eye falls in the new spotted prism, then the pair will pass. If the wearer's eye falls outside of the new spotted prism threshold, the pair will fail. With horizontal prism, just like with vertical, that must fail both tests in order to fail. If one of these tests pass, either the millimeter test or the prism test, then the pair will pass. Now let's take a look at this process step by step. The first part of the process is applying the millimeter tolerance. So looking at our illustration of the lensometer, we see that the right lens has been centered and spotted, and the left lens has been centered and spotted. When the distance between the right and left were measured, the optical center or the glasses PD measures a 56. When we look back at this pair, we actually wanted a 60 millimeter glasses PD so that it would match the patient's PD. So the first thing that we're going to do is compare these two. To apply the millimeter test, simply subtract the glasses PD from the patient's PD. So 60 minus 56 equals 4 millimeters of error total. If we assume that error is symmetrical, then we can divide by 2 to find out that we have 2 millimeters of error per eye. ANSI allows us 2.5 millimeters of error, but this pair has 4 millimeters of error, and so this pair fails the millimeter test. But ANSI also allows us to be off by a certain amount of prism, which we call the prism test. Looking back at our instructions, the prism test is the second test. In it, we'll induce a third in each eye and spot those locations. Then we'll re-measure the new spotted locations, allowing us to ultimately apply the 0.67 total prism tolerance by determining if the wearer's ED falls at or within the new spots. Essentially what we're doing here is we're finding the point on each one of these lens where a third of a diopter of prism lies. When added together equals the total amount of prism allowed. If the optical centers are located at 56 and our patient's PD is located at 60, their eyes will fall some point outside of the optical centers and the wearer will experience some amount 
of base out prism. To apply the prism tolerance, we're going to put the frame back into the lensometer and we're going to need to slide the lenses outward because that's where the patient's PD is to induce prism until we find the point where that third of a diopter is experienced in each lens. Before we go any further, I want to review the prism amount on the target and what we see. At this point, we have a zero diopters of prism meaning the optical center has been centered in the lensometer and there is zero diopters of prism being displayed. The first ring is the half of a diopter of prism, but we are talking about applying a third of a diopter of tolerance, so we really need to find where that point is on this target. The very beginning of these hash lines are equal to a quarter diopter of prism, and the very first circle is equal to a half of a diopter of prism. Then the third diopter of prism lies exactly halfway between them, which equates to the middle point of these lines. So now the pair is centered in the lensometer, and then we're going to slide it out to induce a third of a diopter in this eye and spot this location and then we're going to induce a third of a diopter of prism in this eye and spot that location. And notice that we moved the lens in a direction so that we were moving outwards toward the patient's PD. The base direction in the lensometer is completely dependent on whether the lens is minus or plus in power at the 180. For this lens it was a minus lens and so we see that this would give us some amount of base out prism which is why these targets were lined up with base out prism. However, base direction is not as important as making sure that you slide the lenses in the direction of the patient's PD. If you do that, everything else should take care of itself. So in the real world, we would just measure the distance between this new set of spots and let's say we got 61. Now we can compare to see if the patient's PD falls within the range that's been created. If the glasses PD equaled 56 and the PD that has the full amount of tolerance is 61, then we create a sort of range where the patient's PD can be anywhere between 56 up to 61 and still be within tolerance. Our patient's PD equals 60 and 60 falls right about here, which would be inside the PD tolerance range. So this pair passes. Even though there's four millimeters of error in the PD and it fails the millimeter test, it still falls within the range of an acceptable amount of prism and an acceptable PD. And so this pair passes. And in academic settings and national exams, you're not going to be using a real pair, so you can't induce prism in the lensometer and measure the prism PD. Instead, you'll need to use Prentice Roll and possibly Oblique Meridian to determine the power at the 180. So let's look at this process. Now remember, if you have a lensometer in front of you and this is a real pair of glasses, use the lensometer. But if you don't have a lensometer and you need to calculate the error, then you're going to use Prentice Rule and possibly the Oblique Meridian. Using Prentice Rule allows us to go about this in two different ways. One option is to find the resulting prism effect from the error, and the second option is use Prentice Rule to find the tolerated PD error using the prism tolerance amount. To find the resulting prism from the error, we're going to use Prentice Rule, which is little d times big D divided by 10. For little d, we'll use the distance that we're off by, the PD error amount. And the dioptric power, the big D, will be the power of the lens at 180, which is the horizontal meridian, which is the meridian that we're dealing with for PD. So the prism for the right eye would be the two millimeters of error times the minus one diopter lens. And we're gonna use the power of the lens at 180. Luckily, this prescription is right at 180, and we can see that the right eye, we have a minus one at 180, and the left eye, we have a minus 150 at 180. 
So plugging those values in, 2 millimeters of error times minus 1 diopter power divided by 10 equals 0.2 diopters of prism. And for the left eye, we've got 2 millimeters of error times the 150 power divided by 10, which equals 0.3 diopters of prism. Base out and base out. This amount of prism is a compounding amount, so we add those two together to get 0.5 diopters base out prism total. And now we can apply this directly to ANSI. ANSI allows us to be off by a total prism amount of 0.67, and in this pair we have 0.5 diopters, and so this pair will pass the prism test. And the second option is use Prentice rule to find the tolerated PD error. This gets a little confusing when you think about the millimeter test, but basically what we'll be able to do is to calculate this amount, the point where the third of a diopter of prism is experienced in order to figure out what the measured PD could be. So to do this, we'll still use the Prentice rule and potentially the oblique meridian formula but we'll be using different variables to solve for little d. Before we were solving for the prism, this time we'll be solving for the distance, the tolerated PD. In this case, P is going to be the amount of tolerated prism. Whenever we want to solve for a different variable, in this case, we're solving for the little d, it's always going to be P times 10 divided by what we have will give me what I want. In this case, P is going to be the amount of tolerated prism, and the dioptric power is going to be the power at 180, again, for the right and the left lenses. So the PD can be off in the right eye. The prism tolerance allowed is a third times 10 divided by the power of the right eye at 180, which is minus 1. And when we calculate this out, we get 3 millimeters. And the distance that the OS can be off, a third of a diopter times 10, divided by the power of the lens at 180, which will allow us 2 millimeters. When we add these two together, we realize that our PD could actually be off up to 5 millimeters total, with 3 millimeters of error in the right eye and 2 millimeters of error in the left eye. When we add this to the PD that we got on the glasses, we come up with 61 millimeters. Now we can use this to create our range. The PD could be anywhere between 56 up to 61 millimeters and still be within tolerance. Our patients again lies at 60 and so that is within the tolerated PD amount. And if you'll notice, 61 is what we got when we measured it. This is how we get it when we calculate it. All the different methods that we used, this pair passed the prism tolerance, and so the pair ultimately passes. Now let's take a look at some of the possible outcomes and whether the pair will ultimately pass or fail. If the pair fails the millimeter test and it fails the prism test, this pair will fail. If the pair fails the millimeter test, but passes the prism test, then this pair will ultimately pass. This is just like the example in the video. If the pair passes the millimeter test, but fails the prism test, this pair still passes. And obviously if the pair passes the millimeter test and the prism test, the pair will pass. So again, notice that the only time it fails is when both the millimeter test and the prism test fail. One last point I want to make about performing this test in real life is when you actually get to the point where you've made two sets of spots, it can be a little discombobulating on which ones are you supposed to measure to and from. So if you have trouble keeping up with the spots that you need to use for the second measurement, feel free to just remove the first spots after you've written down the actual PD. You'll need to use this to determine which way to move the frame when you induce the third so make sure you write them down before you remove them. 
Another option is to use a fine point AR pen to alter the color of the lens meter spots or write like a small vertical dash just above the original set of spots. That way, when you get the second set of spots on there, it's much easier to keep up with which ones the center spots that you actually need to measure the distance between. It's actually pretty good practice. It will absolutely ensure that you don't accidentally measure the wrong spots when performing the PRISM test. Alright, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.